to give us a future and a hope. And so I bless God for this privilege to be before you again. Thank God for my wife and my children who are watching from home. And um, we just celebrated. I got a nine-year-old uh, in the house now. And so my son Noah, we celebrated his birthday yesterday. And so mommy was like, I'll see you when you get home. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> you go serve the Lord. And so uh, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord comes from uh, a, a New Testament epistle just before the book of Revelation called the epistle of Jude. Amen? And uh, as Pastor said, this is the first time I've preached from this book, but Jude, a very familiar passage of scripture that I'll lift for us, and I don't know if we were able to put a picture on the screen that I shared. Yes, there it is. It's Black History Month, y'all. Amen. Come on, you clap for that. Yes. <laughs> That's a good thing, amen? And uh, sports history, Spud Webb and Muggsy Bogues. Anybody remember them? Spud Webb and Muggsy Bogues were two powerful, probably unsung basketball players in the NBA because Spud Webb and Muggsy Bogues' claim to fame is that they are two of the smallest players to ever play in the National Basketball Association. Amen? Uh, and what made them so great is that uh, it had to take a lot of skill and a lot of power in those little packages to be able to compete at the highest level of the game. Well, I want to suggest to you today that I'm going to bring a word from uh, the Spud Webb and the Muggsy Bogues of the New Testament, the epistle of Jude. And we're going to go to two little, very little, but familiar verses in the epistle of Jude, Jude 24 and 25. Jude, 20, Jude is so small, it doesn't even, they don't even give it a chapter one. It's just Jude 24 and Jude 25, and they're in is our text today. Jude 24 through 25, the word of God reads, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. Come on, touch your neighbor and say great joy. To the only God, our savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now, and forever. And the people of God said, amen. amen. The word of God for you, the people of God, thanks be to God. Today, Macedonia, I'd like to speak to you from this subject, strength to stand. Strength to stand. Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight and that you would give us, your people, ears to hear your word, hearts to love your word, and the will to do your word when we leave this place. This we pray in your son's name, our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Strength to stand. There is a famous quote I've heard it attributed to Martin King. I've heard it attributed to Malcolm X. I've even heard that it actually came from Alexander Hamilton. I don't know. But it's a very significant and important quote for my life. Pastor Mike, that quote says, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. The Barna Research Group Macedonia published an article in March, March 4th, 2020 that explored the decline of Christianity in America. The article submits the first and perhaps most significant change we will explore is that practicing Christians are now much, a much smaller segment of the entire American population. In 2000, 45% of all sampled qualified as practicing Christians. That share has consistently declined over the last 19 years. Now, just one in four Americans, 25% 
is a practicing Christian. The article asks, where did these practicing Christians go? The data indicates that their shift was evenly split. Half of them fell away from consistent faith engagement and essentially became non-practicing Christians. That is, they're still Christians, they say, but they just don't do church. Then the other half moved into the non-Christian segment. This shift is those who said, not only do I no longer do church, but I no longer do Jesus. This shift has also contributed to the growth of the atheist, agnostic, and, non, and non-segment, which has nearly doubled in size during the same amount of time. Facts about it is, friends, people in our churches are falling away from the faith. While I will not not take time to explore the reasons reported for this trend, the reality is, is that our church culture in America as a whole, people are feeling for some reason that they do not need Christ and they do not need the church anymore. This is a critical point to ponder, isn't it? For people leave Christ because they feel either one of two things. They feel that they don't need, they feel like they don't need a savior or that they have found another savior. And could it be that in our rush to meet people where they are, could it be in our rush to meet people's felt needs in the church that we have failed to give people what they really need, which is a relationship with Jesus Christ, who is Lord of the world. Could it be, friends, that people are falling away from the faith because we have not clearly preached and taught in a way that illuminates their need for Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord in people's lives? I can hear again these famous prophetic words saying, Macedonia, to us this day, if we don't stand for something, we will fall for anything. The relevant question I want to ask today's text is this, friends. Where does the Christian find strength to stand in a church in a world that is declaring that we no longer need Jesus Christ? In today's text, Jude, the brother of Jesus, teaches us that the, church, the church's strength to stand is found in the power of the eternal and omnipotent God who has saved us through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness that is glad to be saved in the house of the God today? We used to sing that I'm saved by his power to get vine, saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm saved. So I'm going to look at three truths, brothers and sisters, in the text to show us how to find strength to stand when we are in a situation where people are telling us we no longer need Jesus. Number one, our strength to stand is found in a God who keeps us from falling. That's verse 24a. Jude begins the end of his letter to these likely Hebrew believers by turning their attention to the keeping power of God. Jude 24a reads, Now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling. Able, brother Al, means he's got the power to keep us from stumbling. After warning the believers uh, to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints, following his encouragement for the church in verse 20 when he writes but you beloved building yourselves up in God in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit keep yourselves in the love of God waiting for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life and then Jude says and have mercy on those who doubt amen Sometimes people are leaving the church, not only because they reject Jesus, because also we don't know how to treat people. But Jude says, have mercy on those who doubt. Save others and snatch them from the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Jude 
teaches us about how we are responsible to build ourselves and to train ourselves in the faith. Can I just pause as the pastor of discipleship and tell you that Sunday's not enough? Yeah, you've got to build yourself up on your most holy faith. And if you're putting in more of what the world is teaching you, more of what corporate America is teaching you, more of what the hood is teaching you, then you're putting in Jesus, you're going to look more like the world and less like your Lord. But Jude, friends, says you've got a responsibility to build yourself up in the faith. But now he transitions this congregation to set their sights on a God, on God, lest they come to believe that their strength to stand relies upon their own spiritual and moral capacity. Come on, let you look at your neighbor and tell him you can't do this on your own. Jude teaches these first century Christ followers Macedonia to find their strength to stand in the keeping power of God stay with me for it is God alone who can keep you from stumbling the Greek word translated keep in the text in English refers to the idea of one guarding something think of a security guard at the jewelry store you know how they look at you when you come in Think of a soldier standing at attention or the secret service guard protecting the president. Well, Jude in 24A church teaches the church that God is the watchman of your soul. God is guarding you because if God was not guarding you, you would find a way to stumble. God's the watchman of our souls, church. God is guarding his beloved children in seasons when the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ is challenged by the lie that there is in the world another savior. The brother of Jesus instructs this early church not to fall into the sin of error and disbelief, which leads us into the life of sin and rebellion against God by remembering that God is your keeper. I would encourage you today to read Jude when you get home as a Sunday afternoon experience. Because once your doctrine goes bad, your living goes bad, friends. Mm -hmm. Paul told Timothy, Timothy, pay attention to your life and your doctrine. Because I can tell what you believe by the way that you live. And when your living is foul, it's because your believing has gone foul. Is there anybody in the house of God, though, today who knows that God is a keeping God? Uh, Let me see if I can make that plain today. Some of our testimony goes like this. God brought us out of addiction. God brought us out of sexual sinfulness. God brought us out of false religions. God brought us out of making our career a religion. God brought us out of a criminal lifestyle. God brought us out, did I come down your row yet? Of self-worship. And the only reason that you have not gone back to the life that God brought you out of is because God is a keeper. (laughs) That's one testimony of the keeping power of God. But can I talk to y'all who grew up in the church? Here's your testimony. Some of y'all wanted to be a criminal. Some of y'all wanted to be self-absorbed. Some of y'all tried to be workaholics and alcoholics. Some of y'all tried to follow another religion. Some of y'all wanted to commit all types of fornication and adulteries and sexual sins. Some of y'all wanted to get high as a kite, but God is a keeper. The hymnologist said it this way, I'm prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for your courts above. But I can't get there unless he keeps me while I'm here. And in a time where the pandemic has tempted the saints to doubt the sufficiency of the Savior because of the suffering we have seen in this world, I came to tell someone, you... Uh, it's not time to run from the Savior. It's time to run to the Savior if you don't know him. But if you know him today, I just came to tell you your strength to stand is found in the God who is your keeper. 
God is keeping you while the world is looking for government and politicians to save them. God is keeping you while people are turning to burning sage and calling on the ancestors. You just keep calling on Jesus. God is keeping you when your girlfriends can't come to church on Sunday morning because they spend Sunday mornings with their bae. God is keeping you. When the world is praising the gospel of wealth, you keep confessing the gospel of Jesus Christ because God is keeping you and you've got strength to stand because God is a keeper. Second truth I see in the text is this, friends. Our strength to stand is found in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's verse 24b. Next, Jude turns our attention in the B part of verse 24 to the cleansing power of God. Anybody glad that God is a cleanser? <laughs> he cleanses us from all our sin and all our shame. God's cleansing power. Jude writes now to him who was able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. In the world, God keeps me from falling into sin, the sin of denying the salvation we have received in Jesus Christ. But in heaven, brothers and sisters, God presents us both now, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ, and in the day of judgment to God's self, blameless and with joy, because we are standing in the righteousness of Jesus, the Christ. You see, if I had to stand in the strength of my own life, friends, I would not last one second in the presence of God's holiness. We don't talk about that, though, anymore. God is holy. There is no, 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 no dot of sin and iniquity and, 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 and filthiness in him. He is a holy God. But my sin, friends, would disqualify me. But Jesus lives sinlessly fulfilling the righteousness of God for me. Jesus died on the cross and received the punishment of God's wrath for me. Then Jesus rose from the dead, providing reconciliation and peace in my relationship with God for me. I've got eternal life, Tammy, because of what Jesus did for me. So that when I die confessing faith in the salvation of Jesus, I immediately am in the presence of God, blameless. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, blameless. Because God has accepted the righteousness of Jesus as the believer's righteousness. I am acceptable to God, Macedonia, and that is a reason the text says, for great joy. I couldn't stand on my own, but because the Savior stands for me, when God looks at the Savior on the cross, he sees me in my sin. But when he sees me in glory, he sees nothing but the righteousness of the Savior. That just got to be good news. That, that's the reason for praise today. That, that, that's the reason for joy because I understand the truth and the reality of my righteousness is that it is filthy rags. On my best day, I can't stand in his glory because some of my best deeds I did for my own glory. So I wouldn't even stand, Tooks, when I get in his presence because I would have manipulated grace and goodness for my own prestige and power. But he accepts me because when he sees me, he sees the Savior. That's my testimony today. I stand before you today only because of the righteousness of God. Y'all don't want to see my highlight reel in sin. But I stand before you because the Savior is standing in me. Let me see if I can make this plain. Let's roll back to the Old Testament. The priests, Elder Boyd and Elder Oda, had to prepare himself the high priest, with different rituals once a year to go and offer sacrifice for the sins of all the people. And he was only allowed in the presence of God in the innermost part of the temple, which is called the Holy of Holies. Let me tell you, friends, when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, he went with fear and trembling. Because if he made one mistake, he would drop dead in the presence of the glory of God. 
They even, here it is, tied a rope around his waist and put a little bell on it <laughs> so, that, so that if he died, uh, the temple attendants could pull him out if he offended the holiness of God. But Jude said, because of the finished work of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection from the dead, that we can go into the presence of God with great joy because we are safe, because we are standing now in, the, in eternity in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Could you imagine it, friends? Going before God without Jesus? <laughs> you just showed up how you decided to show up in glory. Well, you know what? There are a lot of people who have made and are making that choice. They can do this life without the giver of life. And that is why you can't get caught up in the trap of thinking about your life in worldly and cardinal ways. It's not all about just making ends meet, ends meet. It's not all about getting to the top of the mountain. You must get your mind, as the pastor said, on one accord with the mind of God. You have strength to stand, Massey, because your eternal salvation has been secured because of the finished work of Jesus Christ makes you acceptable to God and activates all the promises of the kingdom. Did you hear me? Christ activates all the promises of the kingdom in your life, and that is a reason for joy. Y'all ain't with me yet. It's okay. It's the 9 a.m. All right, hold on. Yeah. See, 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 we think Jesus just saved us to come to church, but Jesus saved us to transform our lives and make us heirs to the kingdom so that everything that is his becomes automatically ours. Let me see if I can put it like this one, like in this way. Peace is yours because of Jesus. Wisdom is yours because of Jesus. Strength is yours because of Jesus. Holiness is yours because of Jesus. Victory is yours because of Jesus. Eternity is yours through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you've got strength to stand no matter where you stand in this life because you stand in the righteousness of Jesus in every Everything that you need in this life and for the life to come is yours in the Savior. Now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. We've got strength to stand because, brothers and sisters, uh, we are being kept by God. Uh, we've got strength to stand because we stand in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But thirdly and finally, our strength to stand is found in God's eternal authority. Yeah, let me see if I can explain that to you. That's in verse 25. Verse 25, friends, roots our strength to stand to stand in the sovereign reign of God over all things throughout all time. Are you with me today? Jude writes in verse 25, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is, that there is no other Savior. The false teachers and the unbelievers walk away from Jesus because they believe in another savior or that they don't need a savior of all. That's self-righteousness. But Jude submits that God is the only savior and that God's salvation comes only through the lordship of Jesus Christ, which flies in the face of the false teachers that are seeking to try to cancel culture Jesus in the church Jude is writing to. And I just want to Make a side note that all false teaching doesn't happen over the pulpit and on social media. No, 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 no. Sometimes it happens through the whispers in the pews. Jude speaks of the false teachers, MCOP in verse 4, for certain people have crept in unnoticed 
who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who perverted the grace of God into sensuality and deny our only master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jude says that God is the only savior. That means again that there is no salvation outside of the one true God. Do you know his name today? And then he says that God's salvation comes only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say that more simply? One way to God through Jesus. Jude 25a reads, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority. <laughs> God only offers, friends, one way of access to his salvation and his kingdom, which is through faith in the finished work of Jesus and a life submitted to the lordship of Jesus. That is, Jesus has ultimate authority over the life of the believer. Amen. Okay. Jesus is not just your Savior. He's your Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not your Savior and Lord just because you said a prayer one day. And Jesus is not your Savior and Lord just because you thank him at the Grammy Awards. No, no, no. Uh, uh, if Jesus is Lord means that, that, that the greatness of God is displayed in Jesus. Jesus is Lord means that the royalty of God is displayed in Jesus. Uh, Jesus is Lord means that the power of God is displayed in Jesus. Jesus is Lord means that the ultimacy, uh, that means that, that the fact that God is Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, it has all been displayed in Jesus. Therefore, your obedience to God should be demonstrated in your obedience to Jesus. Listen to the evangelist John in his gospel, John 1.14. He says it this way, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory Glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Friends, if God is going to be your Savior, then Jesus has to be your Lord. Finally, in the B part of verse 25, Macedonia, Jude teaches that these Jewish Christians have strength to stand because their salvation is secured because God's rule extends not only in Jesus, but through all time and eternity. These early believers don't need to fear the concerns raised by the false teachers because God, the only Savior, has reigned through the Lordship of Jesus Christ <clears throat> throughout eternity past, in time right now, and will continue to reign into the eternal future. Jesus reigns forever. That means if he reigns forever, there's nobody above him and there's nobody who, beside him who can contest his reign. Uh, let me see if I can make that plain before I get out of your way. Friends, as African Americans, we should be believers of the, in the sovereignty of God above everybody. As African members, we should be a people who are able to see the sovereignty of God in all times because of our ethnic experience in America. God, through his sovereignty, has allowed us to stand through the nightmare of the Middle Passage. Through the terror of slavery, God has allowed us to stand. Through the progress and failure of Reconstruction, God has allowed us to stand. Through the, through, through the midnight of Jim Crow, God has allowed us to stand. Through the tragedy and triumph of the civil rights movement, God has allowed us to stand. Through the revolution of the 70s, God has allowed us to stand. Through the materialism of the 80s, God has allowed us to stand. Through drugs and AIDS and gangs in the 90s, God has allowed us to stand. Through the uncertainty of the new millennium, yet the rise of the first black president, God has allowed us to stand. 
through police brutality, bigotry, rising mortality rates, and the disproportionate impact of the global pandemic. Yet still, we praise God because God has allowed us to stand. We are a people who should be able to see the sovereignty of God at all times. Whether I'm up, whether I'm down, whether I'm level to the ground, Jesus is Lord. The God of our weary years, the God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, uh, keep us forever in the path, we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, lest our heart drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee shadowed beneath thy hand. May we forever stand true to our God and true to our native land. We should be able to be a people who are looking for God no matter what we're going through in this world. But the reality is, friends, that many of us still don't see him because we refuse to look to the cross. We're looking to identity religions instead of looking to Jesus who gave us our identity who gave us the beautiful black skin kissed by nature's son. We're looking to capitalism and upward mobility instead of seeking first the kingdom of God and trusting that everything else we need will be added unto us. We're looking to self-definition and self-expression as the apex of human purpose instead of God who is the giver of meaning and purpose. But today, brothers and sisters, as I take my seat, Jude says, like Lauren Hill, it all falls down. For your strength to stand is only found in the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who gives us strength to stand by keeping us from falling, by presenting us in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, who reigns together with the Father and the Spirit throughout all eternity and in time. Look to God, I encourage you today, to find strength to stand, friends, in a church and in a world that is telling you to move beyond Jesus as the only Savior. The saints of old used to say it, say it like this, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Therefore, they were able to glorify him and say, oh, precious is the flow that makes me <laughs> white as snow, no other fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we lift our lives and our hearts to you again. We lift our minds and our bodies to you again and ask for your strength to stand in a world that is always calling us away from you. Help us, Lord God, not to find meaning and purpose outside of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. But as we are grateful for how you have kept us and grateful for how you have restored and present us back to the Father, we ask today that we would honor your Lordship in our lives and whatever we do in the world, we would use it for your glory. And whatever we do in the church, we would do it for your glory so that the world might see you and you alone as Savior and Lord in our lives and over all creation. This we pray in the strong name of Jesus and everybody who loves him and everybody who trusts him and everybody whose strength to stand is found in him said amen and amen. Amen. God bless you, family. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Come on, let's give God some praise. And as we stand here today, we want to make sure we give someone the opportunity 
to know Jesus. You can stand firm in your situation and stand strong if you know the one that's in your life that can help you to be able to stand in challenging times. And we want you to know we're praying for you wherever you are in your home. I don't know what you're going through or whatever circumstances that you might have. God is able to keep you. And that's the key, that God can keep you. And we thank God um, that wherever you are uh, right now, I, I hope and pray that there's a brother or sister that can put their arm around you and pray with you. Or you can call into our prayer line, 1-800-759-1970. Amen. I'm going to ask our uh, leaders to come down front. Amen. Uh, Deacon Tammy will be over to my right here. If you want to receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, um, you can come down and, and Deacon Tammy will lead you where you need to go. Or if you just need prayer, we have some uh, ministers and deacons down front who will lead you in a word of prayer. We're going to let our praise team sing and take a moment just to pause on some of those things that Pastor Baker shared with us. and you want to know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you come down to the right. Deacon Tammy will be waiting on you if you need prayer. We got some leaders down front. Don't forget to call that prayer line. There'll be somebody waiting on you. 1-800-759-1970. Let's pray. Dear gracious God, we thank you and we praise you for all you've done for us. We can't thank you enough. God, you bless us as we leave this place, that we might go in power and remember that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you so much, and we thank you. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Tell somebody you love them.